Hi Aquarius and welcome to your monthly horoscope for the month of May. Um, real quickly before I jump into this, I just want to say that I've added some new readings on my website, astrologygrace.com. I've added synastry readings, which is a reading for, you know, two or, or sometimes more people. It's usually a couple's reading, but it can be used with relationships that aren't romantic as well. And I've added forecast readings, which, you know, will take your specific birth chart and look at, you know, your month in advance or a specific day in the future or week. So if you're interested in that, check out the links down below, but let's just jump right into your horoscope. So for you, um, there's going to be a lot of activity in your fourth house this month and Uranus, which is your ruling planet, is moving this month. So it's moving from Aries to Taurus for like the first time in around seven years and anytime an outer planet moves, you know, it's kind of a big deal because um, they don't move that often. It's going to be moving into your fourth house around the 16th of May and you're going to be feeling like you're, you know, having, you might have surprises at home. Um, or with your family, or it might seem more chaotic, but you're also gonna wanna spend more time with your family as well. And the sun is also gonna be in your fourth house at the beginning of the month, so, you know, your family might be getting more involved in your love life, they might be trying to like set you up with people, or, you know, getting involved in already existing relationships. But the thing that's weird this month for you, and I say weird, but the thing that's unusual this month for you is that you're actually looking for, you know, an emotional intimacy or a connection with another person, which is rare for you. And for some reason, you know, your feelings and other people's feelings is kind of like a turn on to you this month um, and you're just kind of really into it and it's what you're looking for and what you're feeling. During the first half of the month, you might... Um, run into like an old fling or get involved with somebody that's very similar to like an ex of yours and it can actually be really therapeutic for you um, to help resolve any issues from the past whether you run into an ex or somebody that's similar to your ex. In general this month you're gonna be looking for a good time and you're also gonna be feeling more creative um, and there'll be a push to be productive again next month in June so even if you're not feeling the most productive this month don't worry you will again soon. <laughs> You might feel less energy though for the first half of the month, especially up until the 21st, and you really wanna keep a watch on your emotional health during this time. Yes, you kinda of wanna kick back, have a good time, be creative, but you also just wanna be making sure that you're paying attention you know, to your inner self and to your emotional needs and your mental health. So again, we talked about the sun is gonna be in Taurus and moving to Gemini this month, and for you, it's gonna start off in your fourth house and then you know, ha around halfway through, move into your fifth house. So a great time to spend time with your family or to just kind of relax at home this month and you might be drawn to relatives and you might also want to move or relocate you know tr travel a little bit or you might just want to change something at your current home maybe you want to you know take on a new house project something along those lines it's also a really good time for you we talked about you know some emotional stuff going on but it's a good time for you to kind of deal with any issues that have been you know lingering and kind of you've been holding on to since you were even like a kid or even something that happened a few years ago and it's a really good time for you if you haven't considered it before to maybe consider therapy to like talk this out with somebody else um it could be really beneficial to you during this time when the sun moves into your fifth house around the second half of the month you're just going to want to have a good time have fun just you know get involved in hobbies do things that are pleasurable to you you might spend more time being active and involved in sports or you might spend more time around children it's also a good time for romance to meet a potential love interest or to just kind of like spark the romance in your existing relationship and it can also be a really good time to make like investments if that's something you've been considering um, mercury is gonna start in your third house move to your fourth and end the month in your fifth house okay so well mercury sorry my battery died I mean my <laughs> the, the, the card filled up so while Mercury is in your third house, it's gonna be a time for like errands, your to-do list is gonna be lengthier than usual, you're gonna have like calls to make, emails to send, meetings to attend to, appointments you have to go to, and it's gonna take up quite a bit of your time. So it'd be really helpful to put together a schedule of some sort. During this time, you might have like important contact with a neighbor, somebody close by, maybe a sibling. And if there's information that you're looking for, you're gonna find that it's like just there for you throughout this time period, the first beginning parts of the month. 
um, anytime you're kind of like looking to find something out, like the answer will just like be right there. So it's pretty magical. <laughs> As Mercury moves into your fourth house, again, we're going to see that you want to spend time with your family, time at home. It's a good time for entertaining others, maybe having people over, having a party, a get together, a good time for like family reunions, um, anything along those lines, or a really good time to focus on house projects. Um, and if it involves learning, you'll be even more interested in it. Venus for you is gonna start in your fifth house and move its way into your sixth. So while it's in your fifth house during the beginning of the month, it's a really good time for like parties and dates and fun and play and romance, like all that good stuff. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna, again, spend more time like focused on your house or your family or your home. Um, but you could still be, you, you know, you could move somewhere new, you could, you know, just have romance in your life, you might attract somebody new. You definitely don't want to gamble with money during this time, so just, you know, be careful. It's also a good time if you're in a relationship to maybe go somewhere together, be more social, and try to, like, do something fun and exciting together. Um, as Venus moves into your sixth house or in, like, the second half of the month, you're gonna feel really satisfied with your work life, and you might not feel super productive, but you're gonna be happier with whatever it is you're doing work-wise, school-wise, and that could just be by... That, the reason for that could be because of the people that you are around while you're spending time, you know, doing whatever it is you're doing. It's just going to make you happier and you just want to be careful not to get involved in like a romance <laughs> at work with like a coworker or somebody in school, um, somebody in a, an organization you're involved in because it could be fleeting due to this placement or transit and pets during this time are going to be really good for your heart so if you have a pet maybe spend some quality time with them your mars is going to start in your 12th house and work its way into your first house so while it's in your 12th house you're going to feel like you're not getting like enough recognition for things that you're doing and that you know added up with not feeling productive and just, you know, feeling a little bit down might, and more emotional than usual, might be the reason why you really should be focused on, you know, your health this month, your mental health, and just, like, not neglect it. But just know that you should just keep continue doing what it is that you're trying to achieve in your life and keep trying because it will eventually pay off for you. You might want to work alone during this time. If possible, it'll actually probably benefit you than working with others. And you might want to work on some stuff that you've been putting off for a while. This is a good time to kind of, like, catch up on some work or whatever it is that you maybe some stuff that you've just been putting off maybe some tv shows that you haven't been watching it might be a good time to kind of like kick back and catch up on some shows some reading you've been meaning to do be really careful during this time with what you share with others because it could lead to you know losses or accidents so just be careful because you don't want your secrets becoming public knowledge as mars moves into your first house during the second half of the month you're going to be feeling a lot more energetic so you'll be feeling a little better you want to make sure you're getting enough sleep though because otherwise you could just like crash and burn and you don't want to push it so you know use this energy as a good thing but just don't like overdo it you might feel like the very first day of may like your mind is like right on a trigger where mars is squaring uranus and it could result in you making a really hasty decision which could also play on you know you feeling a little bit down because it could also lead to explosions, so you might not start the month off and like on the best foot and you're going to be feeling really tense when you first enter May. So just be aware of that and know that, you know, it will get better and the month will improve and June will be even better for you. So that is your monthly horoscope for the month of May. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video and have a good day or night. <music>